Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everybody, welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. I uh, hope you had a uh, good week so far. I'll be ready to continue with a uh, little bit more fly to learn, because uh, that's what we're going to do today. And as I understand it, we're still on the aspect ratio part of the engineering of flights. Um, we're going to get started on the uh, words, the aspect, or the the, the test flights. So I'll spend a little bit of time reviewing um, what you. Are they still not up there? Hmm. All right, I've been having some issues lately. Uh, that might be. I'll try again tonight with um, with tonight's uh, classes as well. So if all goes well, um, you should have last week's and this week's go up tonight. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll, I'll get the I'll get I'll get last Wednesday's middle school one up as well. Apologize for that. All right. So uh, aspect ratio. Let's get started with this, and then we'll go into the. Um, We'll go into the, the test flight portion, which uh, you guys will do in class. So you guys will have um, a good chunk of the class to do the uh, do the flying. And then we'll see where we go from there. So aspect ratio. Oh, OK. I was told that that was not the case. Did you guys do the test flights for aspect ratio? OK, the calculations. All right, so you did the flights and the calculations then. And the idea, maybe, maybe there were, there were, you had some trouble making the plans, but the idea was that that was what you guys did last time. Is that correct? Huh. Okay. So I've got one person saying that you guys flew last time at the end of class, and another person saying that. Uh, today was going to be flying, doing the actual test flights. Um, raise your hand if you managed to do the test flights last class. Oh, okay. Um, raise your hand if you were supposed to do the test flights this class. Wow, okay. The class is split exactly down the middle on that. Oh, you started them. Okay. Okay. Well, then that um that helps explain things a little bit. Well, why don't we um why don't we spend the first like 10-15 minutes at least uh, finishing up the test flights for those of you who haven't finished them yet, uh, just so you have a full set of data. And then, um, and then uh, we can we can move on to the rest of the lesson, just so everybody's got it. So, go ahead and get the uh, the plane maker open. And oh, looks like the plane is already open. Perfect. But those of you who do not have it, just go ahead and hit open. And then it's going to be under 
X-Plane 10, Extra Aircraft, Experimental, Vans RVs, RV10, and then RV10 ACF. So we've got that open now. Remember W, A, S, and D will rotate the plane in different directions. What is Airfoil Maker? Um, Airfoil Maker, I uh, believe, makes specific wing shapes that you can use. For your planes. Let's see here. Let's open it up and see. Okay, very graphy. Yeah, it looks like Huh. All right, and provides results on I guess various changes in direction based on g-forces? I'm not entirely sure what exactly is going on here. I've never actually seen this before. Well, anyway, airfoil maker should be, that, that should be the point of it. Anyway, so we've got our plane here. And uh, as you can see, we can modify the wing by going to standard wings and affecting the uh, the wing size with this uh, oops, with this menu so wing one semi length is going to be 25 to 500. Zero, zero. Wing two, uh, lat arm is 24.95, and wing two, vert arm is 0.25, positive 0 0.25, 0025. And that should give you some highly absurd modified wing shapes. Like, look at those wings. And then you'd be able to fly it. Uh, and then you can just do that with each um, set of set of data. Just affect the wings. So, you know, the, the plane is, you can save it as first name 50, save as, and then call it, you know, first name 50, and then 40, 30, 20, and 10. And just do the, the different changes and see how long it, when you fly the plane, see how long it takes for the plane to take off. So yeah, wingspan, mean chord, aspect ratio, takeoff distance. And then you just take off three times with each um, wing length. Because you would come into, let's see here. So if I were to save this as uh, Thomas. OK, I guess this has got insert on. Okay, it really doesn't. There we go. 50.acf. That was weird. Save aircraft. Then, if we were to open this up in X plane, yeah, run demo. We could then open that plane, take off from um, Seattle, Tacoma. And um, run our run our tests. So to that end, um, if you feel, oh, let's see here. So aircraft extra. Where is this saved again? Save as extra experimental. 
down here under Ben's RVs, RV10. There's mine. And then we'll fly. Um, lateral, lateral arm and vertical arm for wingspan 50 are 24.95 and 0 0.25 respectively. So there, I'll pause this while well, X-Plane is loading so that you can see that. Forgot how long explain can take to start. The ends of your wings are tilted backwards. Um, did you make vert arm negative 25 or positive 25? Oh, first name 40. Um. Okay, then let's see here. Cancel. Let's see if we can't replicate it on the, the plane here. Standard wings. Of course, X plane is ready now. Pause. Semi length is 20. Lat arm is 19.95. Uh, we'll get to the takeoff distance and uh, the aspect ratio in just a second. Hmm, I suppose I suppose you just want to make sure that um That arm is fine because I can see the potential for the plane wings to be backwards on that. Right, no, sorry, I wasn't actually um I wasn't actually 
unpausing the screen until I had gotten the plane, just so that the the numbers stayed up there. Um, I guess just it shouldn't be at all. So double check your twenty. Oh, that's two hundred zero. I suppose just double check your, um, oh my goodness. Your units, <sighs> words. I see those are in words. Interesting. Okay, so how do you find the aspect ratio? Uh, so the aspect ratio is the wingspan um, divided by the mean chord. So in this case, it would be 30 divided by 4.8, which gives you 6.25. Um, so the wingspan for the, each of these is going to be... Um, whole units and then the um, the mean chord will remain the same I believe yep the mean chord is always 4.8 so on your wingspan of 50 it's just going to be 50 divided by 4.8 and then 40 divided by 4.8 and then 30 divided by 4.8 and then 20 divided by 4.8 and 10 divided by 4.8 so on and so forth until you've got the um, until you've got the uh, the aspect ratio of each of them. I don't know why the aspect ratio is on each of them, um, because the aspect ratio is going to stay consistent. It's always going to be, uh, in this case, a little bit over ten, uh, and then a little bit over um, eight, and so on and so forth. Takeoff distance might vary a little bit just because of external factors, but in order to find the the takeoff distance, what you can do is under data input and output and settings, line. 21 is location, velocity, and distance travel. If you check the last two checkboxes here on line 21, this will keep you informed. So we've got um, distance, 0 0.607 feet. Plane 10 will not take off. That is entirely possible. It's possible that the, uh, the aspect ratio is not so, like, sufficient for the plane to be able to take off. Um, just uh, Mark just put an NA. Anyway, um, yes, for for not uh, applicable or not available.
Anyway, that's pretty loud, and you guys get the idea. What is going on with this right here? Um, when you've run three tests for uh, each of the uh, for each of the the wingspans um, and marked the takeoff distances, just go ahead and raise your hand. And uh, once we've got pretty much everybody's hands raised, then we will move on to the next thing. Uh, sure. Let me actually set them up to something correct because I've been dinking around with them. So as you can see, it's kind of a mess right now. So let me uh, reopen. Don't save. We'll open RV10 one more time. And we'll get it. Do you want it for... Um, do you want it for the Wingspan 40 or is it just it's generally speaking... All right, well, let me go ahead and get that put in. 20, 0, 0, and then um, the lat arm is 19, no, it's 1995, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. All right, and that will that will complete the properties of wing two for wingspan forty. Also, if you're done um, flying test flights, you're more than welcome to just fly uh, for fun, or uh, you know, spend some time doing some work on something else you got to do, or whatever. Uh, I'm not I'm not making you, you know, run more tests or sit there or anything like that. No, no, no. No. That might be why. Yeah, wing 1 has a semi length of 20. Your Orchrist. I mean, you, are you referring to the sword? 
<laughs> don't cut living things with it. Uh, oh, 30. There you go. Oh, gotcha. I suppose that is a pretty good gold standard. So when you say in your RPG, at the risk of getting uh, off topic here, oh, gotcha, makes sense. You're referring to pen and paper or? Oh, uh, Neverwinter Nights, okay. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, in essence. Um, oh yeah, I'm 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 well familiar with Neverwinter. It's a good it's a good time. Um, yeah, in essence, the higher the the number, the less distance you have to use for takeoff to a point. Um, but but generally, it's easier to generate lift with a higher um, with a higher uh, uh, words, aspect ratio, geez. Well, that's a huge undertaking. <laughs> Might want to start with smaller bites. How much are you looking to get?
That is the dream, isn't it? Hmm. Well, okay, so you find your airplanes using the same uh so if we go to open aircraft it's going to be under the same um hierarchy that it was in the in the plane uh editor so it's going to be x plane 10 then extra aircraft then aircraft or excuse me not aircraft from previous versions x plane 10 extra aircraft experimental vans rvs rv10 and then the one that you made Like I said, that is that is very ambitious, Gaidman. Do you have any other uh, projects under your belt already done? Well, I would highly recommend um, getting some smaller projects under your belt. Well, the will to learn is awesome, too. All right, excellent. So I got another vote for done. Uh, just as a reminder, go ahead and raise your hand when you're, already, when you're done running the test uh, flights. If you're not done, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not rushing you. I just want to make sure that we have a, an accurate uh, census of who is and is not done. Yeah, the will to learn is definitely important. I will say, though, that you'll probably want to start really, 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 really small, like smaller than you think is necessary, because you will surprise yourself with how big these projects can become. Yeah, x -Plane does that. It's wonderful. Um, it always loads slowly. It's a, it dumps a lot of things into memory.
how's everybody doing with the uh, with the flights? Yeah, but you're going to have to you're going to have to find some way to subsidize that until you start charging for it. And you're going to need a team of people. You're going to need a large team of people. And it's going to need It's going to need a lot of money. Do you know how much Star is in this race so far? At minimum, yeah, it's actually uh, well, right, but the that is not that is not unusual. I mean, okay, so I I have faith that they'll come up with something eventually, but it won't be anything like the product that they imagined it was going to be and that they're selling people on. Um, and it's yeah, that's the thing. Two years is not a very long time for development, especially with what they're trying to do. And I'm not trying to defend them. I think that I think that they promised everybody the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they did it so that they could get money to make it, but they vastly blue-skied what kind of work it was going to involve. Yeah, but really, huh. um, they vastly blue skied what kind of work was going to be involved and how much they could get accomplished in this period of time. And now they're coming out with um, 3.0 Alpha, which is, <sighs> yeah, the, their project speed is, is pretty slow, but it's also not unheard of um, for something that's this ambitious and hasn't been done like this before and is uh, as detailed and uh, insane as they're planning on making it be. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's also a huge game. Um, so that's the reason why I say that is um, let me look up some numbers real quick. So you find the takeoff distance by uh, under settings, you've got data input and output, and then it's going to be line 21, location, velocity, and distance traveled. I'll pause the screen there so that you can see that one. Um, So, World of Warcraft, two hundred million dollars for its first four years. That's how much it cost to keep to develop it and keep it running. Um, it took them three years to develop it. Now. That is something that is not trying to simulate physics to the level that you know Star Citizen is. It's also something that relies on uh, a highly traditional sort of MMO-style battle with you know the, the skills being numbers and everything's kind of you know like uh, numbers on the keypad or whatever, and everything's sort of all about tweaking those skills and and the, the, you know there's sort of a, a, a set uh, number of limitations. On top of that, um, WoW is World of Warcraft is uh, is is pretty, for sure. But if you're talking about making, you know, Neverwinter Nights look like chump change in comparison and be in VR, you're talking about some serious next generation hardware uh, and some really really beastly servers.
So even if you, um, you know, if the technology catches up, you're probably looking at like a similar development cost and time. And also keep in mind, uh, World of Warcraft was developed by a team of like, these, these teams are usually measured in the hundreds. And I'm not trying to like scare you away from it, you know? I just mean, that's an awesome, awesome thing to want to do. And I think that it's something that you should shoot for. But I think you should also focus on smaller projects first because getting something completed and out there, ah, there's nothing like it. You know, being able to finish something and be like, I made that, it helps drive larger projects because you also have a better idea of um, how something like this might be structured. So you can be faster and get more done in a shorter period of time because you know more. So food for thought. Anyway, um, if that's, you know, if that's really what you want to do, I mean, I ain't going to, I ain't going to talk you out of it. I just, uh, I figured that might be something worth considering. How's everybody doing on the flights? Uh, once again, just one final reminder, uh, raise your hand if you're done flying them. Right. How do you fly a helicopter? Oh, geez, with great difficulty. So you've got the stick, which controls the, the pitch and roll of the helicopter. And you think of that like a traditional airplane, except for the fact that a helicopter's propeller is on top. So um, in order to make the helicopter move forward, you have to pitch it forward. And then that, that causes the, the, you know, the helicopter to tilt forward and the, the top rotor will spin and, and, and pull it forwards. Um, same with the rolls, uh, you got to roll it to the left or right in order to, to turn it. How do you, how do you tilt it forward? Um, I have, I have not done it in x -Plane, so I couldn't say for certain. Uh, I do know that there's also an elevator on a helicopter. I don't know what the key is for the elevator either, but the elevator is kind of like the gas pedal of the helicopter. Um, you gotta, you gotta engage the elevator in order to make the helicopter the, the rotors on top spin faster, which will cause it to raise or lower, and in combination with tilting the helicopter, cause it to move, you know, forward, left, right, back, whatever. Helicopters, in essence, are are tricky beasts. Uh, they require a lot of finesse and a lot of training to do, and I'm not entirely sure how they work in X-Plane. Helicopter, Bell 206. Listen to me, I just sound like the dream killer today. That's not actually my intention. I just um, I just want you guys to know. Because for me, at least, knowing something is difficult at least prepares me. If I think it's going to be easy and it ends up taking more time and it ends up being harder, sometimes that can be more discouraging than knowing that it's difficult from the outset. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we got our pedals for yaw. Um, we've got, I want to say our elevator is uh, 
I have no idea what the elevator is. Nope, that's just looking around. Let's zoom in. That's looking around as well, and then doing some weird, creepy things with your head. All right, let's check it out. Settings, joystick and equipment keys. Uh, ah, so F2 is engine throttle up. So that probably, probably translates to the elevator on a helicopter. Let's see here. Let's try it. Nope. Ah, F4 makes you go up. Oh, you really should be controlling it, though, when you do that. Okay, so... I don't know why it's beeping at me. I'm missing something. Oh, I think I've got... There we go. F5. Okay. And then F... Come on. Oh, okay. All right, I did it. Well, that wasn't my intention. My intention wasn't to... That wasn't my intention at all. My intention was to let you know that it's a long road. And while I don't doubt your ability to do it, I didn't want you to fall down into the, you know, the same kind of traps that I've run into, just thinking that it's going to be a, a smaller project than it might actually be. That's all. At no point was that ever meant to insinuate that it was anywhere in the realm of failure. Nobody's ever failed for attempting something. even if they don't manage to do it. The attempt in and of itself is, uh, is a success. Yeah, it is kind of surprising. All right, everybody. Um, we're at that time, so I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the poll questions, and uh, then we'll leave it open for question and answer time, and then we will uh, break for the weekend. Uh, so after the poll questions, if you don't have any questions of your own, you're more than welcome to head out, and uh, have a great weekend.